we're back, everybody. It's the second episode of the podcast. Um, we'll figure out how to start these Ooh, I eventually. Only have one now, though. Second. Oh no, that one's broken too. <laughs> second. second episode two. <laughs> episode two. It, it I guess definitely it, looks like you're doing something rude there. I don't care. I guess I guess uh, all the audio only people, if anyone even wants to listen to this. Uh, can't see my fantastic nails. I should put those away instead of advertising how mm-hmm. sad they are currently. Hi. Hi. <laughs> We're back. We're doing a podcast again. 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 We did more than one. Holy shit. <laughs> That's it's a I miracle. Think, I think that is to be celebrated considering yep. us and our lives. Yes. And the state of everything in the world right now. Anyway. No, wait. And... Everything's fine. Watch anime. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna wax nostalgic I this guess. week. I, um, I was, I was going to say nap, but no, I, no I, napping until this is done. I'm so tired. Okay. Anyway. So we figured, uh, since this is early in an anime podcast's life, uh, it would be a good idea to give you guys a bit of our anime origin stories. Um, it was really different in Canada than it was for Americans. We didn't have like. Tonight. Ooh, wait, wait, wait. Pokemon Spotlight Hour. Skitty will be in the spot. Oh, it went away before I could read it. Skitty. Sorry. Um, yeah, so we have to have a conversation about your Pokemon Go notifications in the middle of the podcast. No. <laughs> Someone invites me to a raid. I'm doing it. It's the law. Yeah, anyway, we grew up without Toonami and stuff. It was very, very different. Uh, we got different shows. We got different dubs at some points. So we thought it would be kind of fun to share our experience with you non-Canadians who got to experience it differently and also have fun with the Canadians, I guess. I don't yeah, like, I yeah don't, just, don't. just make some Canadians feel nostalgic. I guess. I don't um, know. The problem is that it's like a very specific time. So like if you're not our age, it also might not resonate with you. Wow, I mean, I'm the, doing a really good job advertising it. Please stay. <laughs> Please stay for this podcast. I promise it's not just old people being old. It is. it is. No, no, we're not even that old. We should. You, we're not even that old. I don't think. I don't think. We're yeah, Zay, We're we're past twenty five. We're officially ancient. By anime standards, mm-hmm. we would already have abandoned our we've ca- entered, kids and we've moved entered. to America. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Um, also, I think our little anime origin stories were very different for the two of us. Yeah. Um, I think that not not to brag, but mine's pretty weird. Um, <laughs> if I don't, I mean, I think it's pretty weird, uh, but we'll get into that. Yeah. Um, so we, f- we should first set the stage for what the Canadian anime experience was, because it was a little different. Yeah, we we'll didn't s- have Adult Swim or Cartoon Network. I literally, I mean, I guess I said only Toonami. We didn't have the other ones as well. Yeah. We, did, we do get adult, adult Swim eventually, but when, I, did Adult Swim exist when yeah. we were kids in like the early 2000s i don't know yeah definitely america was a foreign land at the time like mm-hmm. it really was um like there was no internet to tell us what was going on in america anyway or at least for our age yeah at Me, least not for our age uh, anyway um um so so for, for for canada we had a few different channels uh the big one that every canadian kid had because it was on um uh, it was like on just basic cable. Yeah. Was uh, YTV, Channel stands, 25. Stands for Youth TV. Uh, yeah, sorry. I know their address off by heart because <laughs> uh, I used to watch it and I used to want to write it to them all the time. Yeah. Um, I, I don't remember their address address. I remember the Station Q, Toronto, Ontario. That's all. Yeah. I, I remember P.O. Box. 439. P.O. Box 439, Station Q, Toronto, Ontario, V something something. Yeah, I remember the Canadian. Uh, That's the, sad. They, all, all you had to say was that first <laughs> that first number, and it just like unlocked. Yep, yep. <laughs> um, I, I I just distinctly remember their holiday commercials because they had this thing where you could write Santa, and it was like fa la 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 ho ho ho, oh and my that God. was their that was the uh, the postal code was ho ho ho. Yeah, in Can- in in Canada, <laughs> I don't know if America does that. I think America does that too. Yeah, but they they have numbers for their postal code, so it's not as fun. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if Americans can write to Santa. Anyway, um, um, YTV stands for Youth TV. Uh, uh, PO Box four three. <laughs> so programming it wise, it was kind of like a combination of Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network. Um, and the excess Cartoon Network stuff ended up on a channel called Teletoon, which was on the premium cable. 
Um, they didn't have that much anime. They were more concerned with like Looney Tunes, Cartoons and Venture and stuff. Bros, yeah. and stuff like that. They were kind of in a war for the Nickelodeon shows. Basically, yeah. they were in like war with YTV for who was going to get the the Nickelodeon stuff. Basically, yeah, and they um, were winning. <laughs> um, yeah, YT YTV had like a slime theme going on that was sort of their thing they were yes. like keep it weird that was their mo- motto was keep it weird um i loved ytv though ytv was like i mean i, I know everybody loved tsunami too and like it really was as important to canadian kids mm-hmm. as tsunami was and like the, the hosts of ytv from our time which is sugar and carlos um there was somebody before them that i don't remember so we should introduce the the, the... i'm like the American viewers won't even know about this because uh, they didn't have the same standards that created the zone. So the zone was a block on YTV that was every weekday from like when school gets out to 5 p.m. Right. Um, I mean, it's it's just like Toonami, but it was during the day instead. But but Toonami doesn't have as much hosting. At, at yeah, with so, it. so so I, that, that, that's what I was getting at. That's what I was getting at. We had Carlos and Sugar, whereas they had Tom. Mm-hmm. They had a robot that was voiced. But as like the host, but he like, I mean, I haven't seen that much of, of Toonami, but mm-hmm. Carlos and Sugar did it kind of different because they'd have like conversations with you throughout the show about the show. Um, and that was because we couldn't have as many uh, advertisements on um, Canadian kids TV yeah. as American kids could. So they had to fill that time with something. Um, yeah. So they'd frequently like come on live in between episodes and stuff um, or probably not live, live. Um yeah, it would have been live for uh, the Pacific. Yeah, not Pacific. It would be it, anyway. It would be live for Newfoundland. Um, <laughs> yeah, and they were very important to losers like us because we didn't have real friends, and it was kind of like watching a TV, like yes. a TV show with your friends. Okay, but listen, I like actually though. I wrote to Carlos and Sugar like when I was a kid, and I got like the canned response back, and it was like the happiest day of my life for real. They read my because they had like a fan mail thing, and they read mine on tv which was about how much i loved their anime community online or like their their you know i didn't use the word anime but how much i loved their 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 community online and stuff um and i got like the the little little photo of them on the zone set back that was like signed but it was printed um by them and then during their little fan mail thing man was one of the ones they read and it was like literally the happiest day of my life but like americans imagine if you got to like hear tom read your letter on on toonami it was like it was pretty. You know, it was like only like two sentences, but I was like, it was really cool. It was a really cool. Yeah, thing. they were like integral to us as kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and they also had the Zone Weekend, which later turned into Vortex, um, which was I was uh, out of it by then. I was onto the the internet. You must by have then. seen Vortex. It was the thing with the climbing wall in the background. Oh, mm-hmm. That's. Oh man, you aged. You're younger than me, and you aged out of the kids' Saturday morning plus faster. Uh, we'll get there. Um, we'll get there, though. <laughs> but yeah, so they like during these blocks, they'd play like a uh, mix of like edgy, like goofy, like edgy for kids, goofy cartoons and um, action cartoons like anime, um, and that was sort of like most Canadians' first introduction to Dragon Ball Z and Pokemon and stuff like that. So uh, I think, as most people know. Canada had the road to Dragon Ball Z dub, and it was amazing. Mm-hmm. I actually, I actually like it a lot. I think I like it better than the one the Americans got personally. Maybe that's nostalgia speaking. I will not take that L on other Canadian dubs, but maybe I'll take that on Dragon Ball Z. I don't remember. I mean, but... they they did have to change over at some point because they stopped dubbing it after yep. Frieza or something. Yeah, they didn't. Um, they didn't even make it through Cell. Um, I remember. I remember that like strange change where I was like, "Who what? are these?" New yeah, people? I was like. Vegeta, what happened? <laughs> G- Goku, why are you the only person who's allowed to say he's Goku Stop. now? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the one real Goku. <laughs> anyway. <Yeah. laughs> anyway. So we got our own dubs of a few different things, um, thanks to... Uh, and some of you guys got a few of these dubs, too, from Ocean Studios. Um, but uh, Sailor Moon was dubbed in Canada. Yeah, the one the Americans got, I think, was dubbed in Canada, right? Yeah. They got the 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 Deke one. I th- yeah, I think they got the Deke version. I, I you know, we don't know that much about what was on American television in the nineties. Anyway, yeah, sorry, I, I got us off track because you were listing like the early anime that they got, and I was like, 
Dubs. This is Dubs. Because I, I want to hurry up and get into my card capture Sakura fight. <laughs> we'll get to that. I'm um, like, hurry up. Hurry up. I want to fight you. <laughs> Carry on. Um, Carry on. No, card captor Sakura's dub, I think, was uh, just used universally. Um, but they shows that were dubbed in Canada got more airplay in Canada because there were certain. We have laws that say that a certain percentage of every Canadian TV show or TV channels and, ra- uh, output, and radio and radio. A- and radio has to be something made in Canada. It's like thirty yes. percent or something yes. like that. And that is why, like. You hear the same five Justin Bieber songs over and over again and the same like five metric song- songs still mm-hmm. because there's no, I don't even know who's a Canadian artist anymore. Like they, st- anyway, I just remember I have like stark memories of learning that being like, why are they playing the same song? Now my historical knowledge about this might be wrong. Um, and if it is, I'm sure my friend Jesse Betteridge will correct me because um, he's like an expert on all things anime on the Canadian TV that was like his his shtick um but I I think that also resulted in some Canadian anime co-productions like um Cyber Six uh was was produced um it was like Canadian produced based on a French comic or Argentinian comic maybe um and animated at I'm blanking on the studio right now um but also uh Spider Riders which was See, I don't remember any of these. Yeah, you, I, I like Spider I Riders have, was on television. This is so you okay. wouldn't have seen it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it still hurts. Okay, <laughs> listen, it hurt when I heard about it in fourth grade. I'm sorry, me. Yassi. You were too poor for Spider Riders. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, carry on, carry on. It's true. Um, <laughs> it's it's true. No. It, it it had a pretty dope theme song though. They 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 like rapped Spider Rider. <laughs> okay. Um but yeah, so we had some unique or uh different emphasis on anime in Canada. Um Evangelion wasn't nearly as big a deal here. It like I don't think it aired. Blip. It didn't um, air. If it didn't air here, it wasn't I mean like we can't say for sure because we weren't adults, but if it didn't air here, we didn't know what it was basically yeah so cowboy bebop wasn't as big a deal here either as it was yeah the, basically all of the anime that americans liked as kids like all of the the anime anime mm-hmm. we never got to watch <laughs> unfortunately yeah um but i mean we did kind of get like a different balance like i mean we got the same like really basic kid stuff like, we didn't get any like the cult classic ones you know I, except for escaflone escaflone yeah, so was that like a- was like we're gonna we're gonna get there too because that one was my anime moment i think awakened. we can get to there now um oh, okay 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 yeah I, like all See, the... i'm not good at this like uh direction thing <laughs> so uh, if yeah okay if you think so we we had like a list of notes that we were gonna get to but i think we're just gonna we're just gonna free ball it um if you haven't I, like, noticed all we really have to say about the kids stuff is like at the time we didn't really register when we were kids like when we were young I, neither of us really registered yeah. that anime was anime like we'd see dragon ball and pokemon and sailor moon and know it was different but like i didn't i didn't at least register that it was like from another country especially because all of all of it had merchandise that was in like canadian stores and stuff so like it, i it was all still kids shows for me right yeah, and, if you can pick up a Beyblade at T- Toys R Us, it doesn't like register as mm-hmm. like, especially it had like a Mattel or Hasbro logo on it too, so it just yeah. totally seemed like. But Escaflone for me, so Escaflone was on YTV, and I they hyped it up with commercials, mm-hmm. uh, and I just happened to see those commercials, and to me, I was like, oh, that looks like Pokemon, so I'm and I'm gonna watch it, right? And I watched it, and I was like, instantly in love with it. I was I didn't understand what was going on because I, I was so young. I don't know how old I was, but it was before I would have been in like third or fourth grade. At probably I, I got to check what year it was, but like I was way too young to be watching that and I didn't quite <laughs> get it, but I thought it looked cool. I thought that it, it was so pretty and the, the, the opening just like had me and stuff. And like I was, it was the first time that I had seen a, a like a cartoon that I was like explicitly aware it wasn't 
for kids, mm-hmm. right? But it wasn't one of those shows I wasn't allowed to watch, you yeah, know? Like, it, it wasn't like a, you know, I, I had, like, the, the stylization of, like, Simpsons and shit in my head of, like, things you're not allowed to watch. Yeah, it didn't have those, like, adult jokes. It wasn't, like, for adults, but it definitely wasn't, what? like, the shonen, or not even shonen, but, like, kids toy commercial stuff you were used to at yeah, the time. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't feel like, yeah, I, I was, like, really aware right away, and I was, I loved it. Like, I was like, holy cow. And, and... Well, yeah. I mean, it would have been like several cuts above the production values of anything else you'd ever seen before. Yeah, and um, that, that's that's what I mean. That's why I was able to tell like right away. I was like, whoa, this is like beautiful. This isn't a kid's thing. Holy shit. I mean, I didn't say holy shit because I was a kid. But yeah, I was like, that was before Inuyasha came. That was before even, sorry. Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting the microphone's not on the table, so it's fine if my foot accidentally yeah, hits it. bump it now. Yeah, I keep, I keep moving my leggy and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> um... But yeah, that was before everything came. Like that, I went like Pokemon and Digimon. Mm-hmm. I I honestly can't remember if Dragon Ball Z came before Escaflone. I don't have any memories from that. Like I don't have any Dragon Ball Z memories from that like era. So it was definitely around. No, I think Dragon Ball Z came out first. Wait, wait, but... wait, wait. I know why. Jeez, mm, I know why. It's it it was watchable for you. It was watchable for you and not for me because of the time zones. Mm. It because our zone time zones, our zone time zones. Um, it aired like Dragon Ball Z before it moved to nighttime aired at like three o'clock for us. So and you, three you o'clock home is, at, yeah, yeah, three o'clock was when school ended for us. So I wasn't home, but I, re- I was aware of it. Um, but yeah, it was one of those things that was on before. I still remember when Dragon Ball Z first came on and it was like the most fucking confusing thing in the world. <laughs> yeah. Like... That's the other Canadian is <laughs> experience is, is not seeing anything in chronological order. Yeah. We never... I, I I did not finish Ex- Escaflone until like five years ago because they just didn't finish it. <laughs> yeah, they they never aired it in order. They do like marathons occasionally, but my otherwise... I have a very very strong memory of for some wild reason it was they they hyped it up as I think the last time they were gonna ever air Escaflone mm-hmm. and they they marathoned it not even till the end because they only marathoned what they had but they marathoned it on New Year's Eve. Hmm. And it was like the greatest New Year's Eve of my childhood life because I finally got to see farther in. But it was also the last time they ever showed Escaflone. That's such a tragedy. And they never finished it. They never finished anything. Oh, that sucks. I remember like, yeah, I remember not getting into Escaflone because I at the time I was I was a dumb boy. And I was like, I don't want to watch a show that a girl's the main character of unless it was card captors, uh, card captors. The, they're branding it as like Lee being a co-main character totally tricked me into watching that and I just I I, I loved it so much that I um I just kept going yeah you, you didn't give Escalfloni the chance and I gave it a chance by chance so yeah my the first show that made me like realize anime was really something different um like I think I became peripherally aware of it with Digimon like I was like particularly Digimon Adventure 2 because they're they spend so much time in a Japanese high school and I'm like our schools aren't like that <laughs> I've never seen a school like that um so so Digimon Adventure 2 kind of clued Adventure me in but Adventure 2 was the sec- obviously the second one that's with Davis and stuff, with, right? with the eggs yeah. yes yeah, yes yeah, okay DG- that so that was around the time Escaflone came out that would have been around that time yeah um because I remember like, like I remember it being around that time I was talking to my friends about the, the, the eggs and shit. Um, so yes, okay. So that was around that time for me. So Inuyasha was the show that like made me start to, to realize, oh, okay, anime is just a thing I love. And that, that triggered me to start like um, watching more Saturday morning vlogs, like for kids TV and stuff yeah. like that. Because um, I just, I wanted to watch the anime whenever the anime was on. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, from there it was also a slope for me. Like as soon as I was aware of that, like I I started to understand that it was a different thing, and I I don't remember how I learned it was called anime, but yeah. Um, but yeah, Escaflowne was was just like the big thing, and then suddenly I was you know Dragon Ball Z was on at night, and Dragon Ball, and right? you had to catch that. Um, and Inuyasha, like Inuyasha, is probably one of the biggest shows for Canadian kids. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Um, uh, it's it's got the significance that Bebop and and Ava have for kids who grew up on um, Adult Swim. Yeah, yeah. Um, not that any of us also ever got to finish that, but 
you know uh that it was really hard watching that over and over again but at the same time not but like i mean it was it was like difficult to keep track of what's going on because like how many fucking times does does do Kagome and Inuyasha like start to get together and then Kikyo just shows up and is like <laughs> and then and then Kagome's like oh Inuyasha you fucking jerk I'm never talking to you again and then like an episode later they're talking to each other again and then yep. Moroku touches Sango's butt and that's a whole thing and it's just endless cycles. Yes, yeah, so like, it was like really hard to tell if it was but the same thing happened with Dragon Ball Z too like you couldn't tell that it was jumping around. It just didn't make sense. Well, the way they did Dragon Ball Z was interesting because they like got 13 episodes in to like Snake Way and then they jumped back to the start. And then they got like halfway through the Saiyan saga and then they jumped back to the start because they hadn't dubbed any more than that. Yeah. And then they yeah, got so to the they, end yeah, of the Saiyan saga. Every time, every time they ran out of episodes, they'd just start again. Um, yeah. But because you're a kid who's not like 100% what you know, you're watching things like religiously, but not that you know, you're a kid, you miss shit, right? Yeah. So sometimes you didn't even notice they restarted, and then you, like, turn it on, and you're like, oh. I don't even know how many times I watched the Sabrina episode of Pokemon. Oh, my God, same. <laughs> Hold on. I have to uncross my leg, but it's stuck, because I can't touch mm. the leggy tattoo. Anyway, oh, she just got a tattoo of Junkrat. Of the junkest of rats, who is not visiting us today. Um, um, she's angry at us because she's on her diet. But <laughs> anyway, um, I completely forget what we were talking about before I uncrossed my leg. Uh, how they'd skip around and right, stuff. Right, right, yeah, that's it. They'd skip around, and what else did we see a hundred times? Like, but that—that's why Bionics was such a big deal for me. Because so Bionics was their answer to Adult Swim. Uh, that they introduced. Uh, it was their late night programming block where they'd play Inuyasha and um. By that point, so they, they did late night anime before with Escaflone, Inuyasha, Gundam Wing, which I was totally apathetic about, and a couple other things. And then they like formalized it as Bionics, where they'd have Gundam Seed instead, which was fucking terrible. Um, I have big fights with Gundam Seed. <laughs> I hate Gundam Seed. That's... And like, I've, I've never actually watched it. It's... I, I hate it, and I refuse to properly watch it i've seen it here and there and but it, due to my trauma of having to see it on ytv all the time i it was just there was there's a lot about that show that's annoying <laughs> i think maybe some of the hate that seed gets because people love it in japan but some of the hate that seed gets is just canadian kids who are just fucking inundated no with it. no i think all gundam fans fans hate it but mm. like, but but like then, uh, then why do they have the big seed gundam at gundam front tokyo the, the 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 big one they have yeah yeah it's they, unicorn no they have the seed Gundam that you can you can get inside oh that like God, seeds I, that, that really was such a waste in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> now I remember that I didn't even want to do it I was like no you <laughs> no you go ahead I fucking hate this thing <laughs> one once in a potentially lifetime experience of Gundam the thing that I love being not, inside a Gundam no, nah Jeff no. you go ahead I fucking hate this thing. <laughs> Well, now they've got the moving one, and maybe yeah. you'll get be able to get inside of that. I doubt anyone will be able to get inside of that one. Anywho, uh, I just, yeah. Um, but so the the big deal about Bionics was that they actually played stuff in sequence, and they had whole series at once. So like, finally, um, you could catch stuff like Inuyasha week to week and actually see what was happening in the story. Yeah. Um, they also had Witch Hunter Robin. Oh boy. Which was just Do like I a have a lot dream. to say? Yes. Yes. For me. You didn't watch it. For me. That is what I call it. I call it my wild fever dream. You cannot steal that from me. Um, I, I, so, so the way my house worked was that I had a strict bedtime mm -hmm. on Friday nights. I it used to be 10 o'clock when I was that age and I negotiated it to 1030, right? Because Inuyasha was 10 till 1030. Mm -hmm. um so i like negotiated it because it was friday night so i negotiated it with my mom um and i had a little dinky tv in my room um so we made an agreement that as long as i was like ready for bed and stuff and teeth brushed and all that and like tucked into bed ready i could lay i could lay in bed and watch Inuyasha on the tiny little screen right mm -hmm. and then she'd set up my uh uh like the, the like auto sleep thing where it would turn off automatically because i'd fall asleep usually watching it at the end yeah um but she'd always set it for like, I don't know, 25 minutes afterwards just because I liked falling asleep to sound, uh, which meant that I would fall asleep watching Witch Hunter Robin. Oh, that'll fuck you up. It was weird. <laughs> like, I not only was I too young to understand what the fuck was going on, 
but I also only saw it in bits and pieces. Mm. I was, I refuse to think that anime like is a real thing that exists. Yeah. I, I want to believe every time someone talks about it, I'm like, no, that only exists in my head. <laughs> I made that up in my sleep. Like, <laughs> we we have the DVD. We can no, watch it. At no, any we time. Don't. no, we don't. No, we don't. It's not real. It's not real. If it's not real, it can't hurt you. Yes, which under Robin wasn't real. I'm trying to remember which other shows were on Bionics. I'm just gonna. And they had Ghost in the Shell. I know that. And didn't they have Bleach? I don't know. You yeah, were, they... you were gonna get into that because I at that point at the Inuyasha point, um, I had started going on the internet Mm -hmm. jeff uh was sheltered and was not allowed on the internet so i watched Uh, i watched a lot of stuff on tv but i am the youngest of of multiple children which means i had no rules yeah and Um, they had a computer in the basement which was yeah which meant recipe for disaster (laughs) yeah which meant that by age like 10 i had completely unwatched internet access explains a lot doesn't it it does it does <laughs> it, it does <laughs> anyway so yeah i had like so i was already moved on and i had two sisters who were older than me right so they were they already knew like how music downloading and stuff worked and how to stream music which meant that i knew how to get anime and stuff and find things on on by searching them by googling this episode one um <laughs> but i had moved on to that so i had like moved on to like the less popular series or like american series i guess um where you were kind of yeah, I was, I was watching still... TV, but that meant I missed a lot of popular stuff. I have never seen a single episode of Bleach, even though it aired in Canada. Yeah, Bleach because... was one of the big things. On I, I remember the night the first episode of Bleach aired. It was like one of the coolest things I'd ever seen. Um, like, man, the atmosphere. Oh my god, it's not recording. <laughs> It's, I wish it made a louder noise. Anyway, I totally, but I'm sorry. That I you missed, you missed Bleach. You missed yes. the rise of Naruto on YTV. Yeah, too. I, I, I have, I have only seen like five episodes of Naruto in my life. Naruto was in like the 6 p.m. block there. So I remember there was like a block of of TV that I would, I, I would like flip between Teletoon and YTV because Teletoon had a flu, a few anime on between like 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. They'd play Mega Man NT Warrior, which I was super into. Uh, Gundam SD Force, which I tolerated, and Card Captor Sakura, which was the dopest shit in existence. Yes, I, 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 oh, I love that show so much. I um, will defend the Canadian Card Captors dub until the day I die. Honestly, I think it's, I love it, and like, I can't tell if it's nostalgia speaking. It's definitely I, nostalgia no, speaking. No, like, because when I, I don't know, when I listen to the other ones. Usually when it's like still nostalgia based, I'm able to also enjoy the other ones. But like, I don't know, when I watched the, the other dub, that one was aired in America, right? Yes. The, the one that Crunchyroll has right now was aired in America? Or was that no, a, no, is that that a was, redub? No, the English, or the Canadian dub was aired in, um, um, it, it was aired in America too. I don't think and so. that, that was one of the problems is they completely erased all of the gay subtext and there's a lot because no, no, it's I a don't... clamp show. No, I don't think I don't think the Americans had ours. They did. They did. The the one that's on Crunchyroll is uh an I, Asian English. So it's like Singapore and countries that speak English in Asia, they had that dub. I'm like 99% sure that's what Nice America put on the Blu-rays when they put those out the first time and then um, Yeah, well the other dub isn't available anywhere. Yeah, I know. It got, it okay, got yeah, I was gonna say because it can't be put on um, complete Blu-rays of the series because they changed so much. Mm, yeah. um, well. I just remember the one difference mm-hmm. is uh, the Americans didn't get like the first five episodes. We got them, um, but um, they really heavily edited it to just erase everything before Lee shows up. And just make it about Lee and, and Sakura fighting for cards. And it was... It was just a very baffling decision. Yeah. Honestly. You know what was even um, more baffling for me was that um, we didn't get, I don't think we mainstream got the, the Card Captors manga. Mm-hmm. We got the Master of the Clow manga first. In oh. Canada, so so we we got the, the like the, the afterwards when she's when she's got the other staff and stuff with with mm-hmm. uh, whatever we, whatever his name got is the star at the end yeah with the hot butterfly girl and the cute other cat um, with Ruby and I don't know how to say it I we discussed this last episode I made up how to say things when I was a kid. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know how to say that stupid fucking gem's name Sp- spinel 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 I I don't remember I don't remember I do the 
Yeah. I don't know how to pronounce it. I know how to spell it. It's spindle or spindle. I don't know how to pronounce the stone. But anyway, he's the little black cat boy. Yeah, um, yeah. The, the, the so, alternate Carabaros. Yes. So with that in mind, I had only seen bits and pieces of, of card captors because I didn't have Teletoon, right? Mm-hmm. So I only got like what would air around or I like, could find online or whatever, which was not much. But mostly what would air on like other channels. Um, and then I went and I bought what I, you know, the card captors m- manga. <laughs> which was master of the cloud so <laughs> and you were totally i was lost so fucking confused and i loved it that's the thing i loved it i really loved the manga that i read but you i did. had no I had, idea what was going on i had on no idea i like i came in in this you know in like the the not sequel but like i came in in the follow-up five volumes or whatever and i was like and like also it took away the shock i mean it also just i mean it didn't have like the 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 removal of stuff right it's mm-hmm. so, like also i was like wow they're really gay like, <laughs> like, like, yeah like and then, but like in general i was just like what the f-? yeah it no, was it, very it was, confusing it was very confusing in the original because it was just sakura's brother and his friend who's over all the time yeah for <laughs> his friend who's always hanging out in his room and, and <laughs> but like i feel like they they also like really played up sakura's crush on him even more too. yeah like they almost made it seem like she had a chance yeah, more weird. in ours because because they got rid of the subtext between the two of them because i always because, like because yeah. Im- implied relationships between a 10 year old girl and a 16 year old boy I, are less problematic than the existence of gay people of of not even <laughs> like not even the existence just like the maybe the suggestion the of maybe gay people. like i Anime dubs in the 90s were wild. Anyway. Um, I, re- I remember, I think it YTV had it, actually, but the, the Card Captors movie was aired at yeah, it one was, point. It, it was aired on YTV. It was it was for sure aired on YTV because I remember commercials for it. I it never got to watch so it. It was so beautiful. It was yes. such a good movie. In the commercials, they had that like shot where it, when she has the dream. She has mm-hmm. a dream at the beginning, right? I think. She's a dream of her standing on top of like of Tokyo, Tokyo Tower. Tower? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so they showed that shot in the trailer thingies when YTV was hyping it up. And that is like, ah, I remember. That's like burned in my brain as like the prettiest thing is that that pan up shot of her in that outfit. Uh. Even more than that, I, I they also put the second movie on. I, that I definitely don't remember. And, By then and, I was deep in the internet. Yeah, and they had like, uh, there was just this town that they run through and it's so like ghibli messy you know like there's so much going on in it and i just uh, i remember uh, i think that that's one of those things that made me love fall in love with cell animation and painted backgrounds forever Mm -hmm. um but back to bionics because i just want to talk about the other (laughs) stuff that was on bionics before we go into our where we went our separate ways and you started going on the internet and i slowly filtered onto there after buying anime on dvd because, um, you know, th- th- that was a whole experience. But oh, my God, yeah. S- so stuff that they had on Bionics, because Bionics was pretty good. They had Ureka 7. I remember watching the ever-loving heck out of I'm that. I'm trying not to drink my water, like, directly in the microphone. Yeah. Um, I remember I, watching... I definitely don't. I had never heard of Ureka 7 until, like... Yeah, so you, you the, definitely the... missed that plot. Yeah, no, like, I, like, truly... I. Until we met, you never... But also, I didn't know they aired... No, 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 not till then. Till then. No, I mean, like, till I was, like, mm-hmm. back into anime. Like, uh, I don't know how to say back into anime. I wasn't, but, like, in college. Yeah. Um, but, like, I didn't know it was on YTV until, like, 20 minutes ago when I was looking up the list of things that were on YTV. <laughs> like, that's how, like, I had no idea that we got a Rekka 7. Like, <laughs> anyway, carry on. Let alone that you watched it. What the fuck? Yeah, no, it was, I, it was, it was like, great. The first time I saw a Rekka 7 in, when I was older, I, I didn't recognize it. Do you know what I mean? I like, I had never even seen trailers for it. No. So when I read that 20 minutes ago or before we started, I was like, anyway, carry on. So, yeah, the other thing was that as this stuff was, um, was airing on YTV, we also had an anime club at our local library. Um, and like people would bring episodes of Eureka 7 there and Full Metal Alchemist, which was on Bionics. Um, I also didn't know that until 20 minutes before we started. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I only had volume one of that, but I did, I did watch it on YTV and that was a ride. Um, uh, they had Death Note, which was just like. That I think I knew. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah but that... I was, by then I was already online and watching it in Japanese. So. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, that one's that one was like ubiquitous for yeah. anime fans. If yeah. you were in, if you were at all into anime, you were watching Death Note. Yeah. Um, and uh, they also had, yeah, so they had Ghost in the Shell standalone complex. That one, it was on at like 2 a.m. That's the only reason I remember them having it was because when I would look at their schedule, I'd be like, I'd look at like uh, what the poster thingy looked like. And I'd be like, that looks cool. But then it was on at 2 a.m. So, And they also had Dot Hack Sign, which just. That I knew about. That dug up a deep memory for me, though, because I remember I watched all of it. But I don't remember anything about it. And I'm pretty sure it, it it was because I was just bored. But maybe I should give it a second shot because it was directed by the same guy as Irresponsible Captain Tyler. So was Spider Riders, by the way. I Watch thought... Irresponsible Captain Tyler. Okay, that was really loud. <laughs> Sorry. That was so loud. That was really loud. Um, um, yeah, no, I didn't. I mean, I remember that hack being on. I never got to watch it. Yeah. Um, I had also moved on to going to buy burned DVDs at like the, the what we have in, in Toronto called Pacific Mall, mm-hmm. which was kind of like a, 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 a instead of having a Chinatown, we had just a mall. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> and that was where you could go to get all of the like, that's where I went to go, go get my PSP. Sort of like the Crystal Mall? Yes, kind of yeah, like yeah. Crystal Mall here, yeah. Um, it was where I went to go get my PSP hacked. Um, it was, was where I went to go buy all of my ripped anime, and it was Where, where bad. you got your R4, I'm yes, guessing? Yes, where, where I way overpaid for my R4. Because <laughs> I definitely way, I mean, I way overpaid for my fucking PSP, too, because I was like a 12-year-old being like, please help, and there were people online doing it for free. Anyway, um, that's, where I, that's where I got to see all of the things that aired on TV, is I, yeah. would, I went and I just bought them there for a dollar, the a dollar, a, but it was like bad so the way they were subtitled was they took the chinese subtitles and then then, just wrote the english over them no no no, they just google translated them and timed it the same (laughs) so like so when i watched code yes i had no idea what any of the characters names were when i watched the the second half of death note because i watched the season two thingy of death note with the blonde boy i watched that on the two dollar dvds i had no idea what anyone's name was like they just it was just like um, so there was like a Japanese language school in Vancouver that I went to for a couple of years. Um, and they did like a yearly like uh, flea market. And I picked up a couple bootleg DVDs there too. And yeah, and I remember his and her circumstances had the same thing. So I just had to watch the dub. And also it was like, oh, yeah, none, of, the, none of these had dubs. Yeah, it, it was man. That is that is the true way to watch to watch anime in the 90s <laughs> with with google translate or whatever yeah from chinese subtitles that are timed wrong mm-hmm. yeah i uh, canada bionics was also this is the last thing on bionics and it was also the last one of the only places that case closed aka detective conan got any airtime no never saw it before when that I was... gave me a taste for it um <laughs> what is it for mystery solving Oh, I thought you were going to... Okay. I was like, are you taste for what? Hating it or something? Like, no, I love that show. Okay. I didn't know. Um, okay. Yeah. No, I never got to watch it. So I never... I was, in, mm-hmm. in, like I said, on the internet. Yeah, so yeah, you went onto the internet. Yeah. I had full access to LimeWire at this point. Um, <laughs> like uh, there was no stopping me. So you just uh, downloaded anime into your brain 24-7. Well, also um, I was on like Neopets and Gaia Online already. I was also way too young. For, I, I am like an OG Gaia Online. Like, I was there when they introduced the do- donation items. Like, I was way too young <laughs> to be on that fucking website. Anyway. I, I could, at that time, I could only <laughs> access the internet, like, at my local library or by using our dial-up connection on the computer in our kitchen. Yeah, no, I was in my basement already. Like, yeah. I was I was already in the basement. Um, but, but, go ahead, sorry, I forget yeah. what I was saying. <laughs> so, the once a month that I got to go to the right, library yeah. for anime club was like the, or maybe it was once a week, but that was like the only time I'd get to go on the internet and I'd catch up on the latest episode of red versus blue. Um, but like their internet wasn't very good either. So you never got, you had, you were, but the thing is you got to watch on TV more because you're an only child too. Yeah. Like yeah, I didn't, I, I, I didn't, I had to move to the internet because I was last in line to choose what we watched on TV. Like yeah, I had <laughs> full control. Of yeah. The TV so, signal. so you were also, that's why yeah. you were more into the TV stuff too, is that like, I, I went there out of necessity. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did too. Yeah. So Gaia online introduced me to like a lot of anime, you know, I'd be like, Oh, what's this in your signature? Or like people were talking about things or whatever. Um, so then I would go and download it or I'd watch it on, um, what was it called? Mega Mega Upload? Mega Video. 
I think yeah, Mega Upload and Mega Video, right? Mega Video was the video streaming, streaming where you had to wait in between each upload. one. Yeah, oh, God, so I would go find yeah, I would that. go find it on there, or people would link to it on Gaia or whatever. Um, but yeah, by then I had moved on to like what was popular, mm-hmm. popular ish mostly in America. Um, yeah, yeah, I, um, yeah, like I remember I watched. I can't believe you. Know, sorry, I never. You never got to experience the the LimeWire anime experience. Of like downloading anime and hoping it's not porn or, or a if, virus. anybody watching anybody watching who who tried to experience anime or AMVs or anything that wasn't hentai, if you were aiming for not hentai, everybody knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> I used LimeWire, es- especially when you were a kid too. Like a kid, I was the first time that I yeah. tried to download an anime and it was just the hentai image. I was so scared I was going to get in trouble. Well, that's where you learn your lesson for piracy. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Which is watch out for anything that is .mp3 or .mov .exe. Yes. That's the, that's the big yes. thing you want to watch out for. <laughs> I didn't know that when I was a kid, though, right? I didn't even know, like, but but I actually, I got a lot of good things out of the random anime downloads on LimeWire, too. Like, I found a lot of bands I liked. Mm-hmm. When I was older too, the only reason I know what Blink One Eighty Two was was because I was looking for um, Dragon Ball Z AMVs. So I'll... that turned you into a cool person. Yes, it did. <laughs> that. It Meanwhile, did. I didn't have any of that experience, and I was singing Annie songs and drawing Hamtaro on my. Notebooks. I mean, I was doing that too. Well, but <laughs> I did that in like grade seven. Oh no, I, I did too. I was I was still at that age, printing out anime photos and putting them like in my little binder. I drew Hamtaro on my notebook for the first I, day of grade seven. I was really proud of it. I showed it to people. And I can one up you. I, I can like, one up you. I tried to name my sixth grade hamster Hamtaro. My mom wouldn't let me because she said I'd regret it. I didn't regret wanting that, and I don't regret wanting it to this day. We gotta get a hamster, mom. <laughs> we gotta get a hamster. Exactly. No, no offense to hamster lovers, but I'm scarred because I didn't. I mean, kids. Anyone who had a hamster as a kid, yeah, does not want a hamster as an adult because they die so fast. No, because you didn't treat them right when you were a kid, mm-hmm. right? They're great pets. They're great pets. Um, like Hamtaro's not lying about like how like if you're one person, they're amazing pets and they're smart and everything. But when you're a kid, you don't. Your parents treat them like. Or at least back then, parents treated them like, you know, two-year pets or something. Yeah. And, you know, you didn't ever handle them or whatever. So, like, anyone who had a had a hamster as a kid knows what I mean. Anyway, I'm getting on a little tangent about hamsters. But, um, okay. right, so I tried to name my sixth grade hamster Hamtaro, and my mom wouldn't let me. So I named him uh, Toffee instead. Toffee? Toffee, because he was the color of Toffee. That's a pretty good name. Not as good as Hamtaro, I though. know, I know. <laughs> Thanks, Yazzie's mom. Thanks, mom. Thanks. <laughs> I also wasn't allowed to watch Simpsons, so... I wasn't either. I remember I remember I was such a I was such a bitch. I called my mom and asked for permission to watch Austin Powers when I was like I'm not, seven or eight. I'm not even a little bit shocked by that. Based off of what you've told me about little Jeff, I am not even a tiny bit. I mean, bit I had by the that. most angry helicopter parent yeah, situation yeah. going on. I it had the opposite. Good. I had the opposite. I had parents who were like, Well, the first two worked. Do what you want. <laughs> like you know, <laughs> We we got this figured out. You you, you, you just do you. <laughs> Two out of three ain't bad. Go ahead. <laughs> like, <laughs> it treated you like a new roommate more than a child. <laughs> yeah, but Computers I know. Mean, here's there. the thing. Here's the thing. That we're making it sound like my parents didn't love me. Mm-hmm. They did, and that's why I was allowed to have all of those freedoms. Yeah. Like my mom trusted me with all of these things. Unfortunately for her, uh, <laughs> but no, I wasn't like getting into trouble or anything on the internet. All yeah. things. I mean. <laughs> but but yeah no like uh, it was because my mom trusted me and stuff that i was able to like have free reign of lime wire and shit and not end up getting in trouble when i accidentally downloaded hentai when i wanted an amv <laughs> you know like no one knew that i accidentally downloaded hentai when i wanted an amv you got you were able to delete it i was i mean i i'm sure i didn't delete it properly you know i'm i just drained it into the trash or whatever because yeah. i didn't know what i was doing but yeah i, but I also had, like, family of girls nobody would have gotten in trouble for for I mean, a random hentai the, I, they would just assume it was internet crap. that it was an accident yeah. yeah i mean yeah so yeah like i got complete free reign to just watch and do whatever i wanted so i got ahead of you i keep sort of yeah. side side note I, right i like yeah no like my situation was i had to like print out and I and hide it in a little tea box. I had the opposite. Room. I was like trying to. I was trying to throw it out, being like, "The fuck, I don't want this." 
I had like an accidental folder full of it, but not because I wanted it. And it was you just were... your trash bin. It was, it was all hentai and viruses. And <laughs> the printing limit. Yep, yeah. yeah. So uh, my more serious anime experience was was all legit stuff, basically, until like I f- I got my PSP and then I could download stuff to yes, it. Yes, and you could um, watch them on your PSP I, too. Yeah, suddenly anime was portable, and I could also like browse the internet on it. Um, I remember using justdubs.net a lot at the time. Um, uh, everything was like just blank. Was yeah. was the kiss whatever of the time? Yeah, yeah. Like, cause there was just Dragon Ball Z is where I watched all of the Dragon Ball Z episodes. I remember. Yeah, um, yeah just DBZ. It was like just hyphen DBZ or something. Yeah, this was back before there were any of these streaming platforms. So yeah, like, and they there were was like no option. Yeah, they but were to pirate. They were all hosted also on Mega, yeah. like Mega Video. So you also couldn't marathon them if you wanted to. <laughs> that was like that was the worst. Mega part. Video, the only thing that... with a worse ad platform than Crunchyroll. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, <laughs> it's like I, I uh, the wait period was the worst because I don't. Could you pay to get rid of it? Yeah, yeah, no, um, they had like a paid premium thing where you could like pay to get like twenty megabytes per second download speeds and stuff like that, and it was like twenty dollars a month or something. I don't know. I never got it. Yeah, obviously, of course, of course because yeah. it was a huge ripoff. But um, anyway, yeah, watching it that way, um, um, yeah, it was all the just blank is like, yeah, what but, would always come up, and like YouTube wasn't out yet to even watch them there at that time. I don't think, but or if I, they were, it was blocked. I don't know. Yeah, no, it, I just I know I used all like all. I remember watching just DragonBallZ.com no, as soon no, as you said that. YouTube's problem was that everything had to be uploaded in seven minute chunks. Yes. <laughs> so it was actually better to watch it on. Yeah, you would get a complete thing on Mega Video, or you would get it in three separate chunks that you had to search for because YouTube's uh, recommendation algorithm was even less good than it was now. Um, by the way, Nozomi Entertainment at that time put all of their stuff up. Like a lot of stuff has been up on YouTube for over 10 years wow. on Nozomi Entertainment's website, including Irresponsible Captain Tyler. You should watch the Irresponsible Captain Tyler. Um, but I mean, so I, I bought a lot of DVDs at Indigo Books. Yeah. Th- that was like... Chap- that was called Chapters for us at the time. Yeah, Chapters, Indigo. They So you had Chapters, and that was on the East Coast, and right. Indigo was West Coast. We never actually Coast. said that. Sorry, Jeff and I grew up in different provinces. I grew up in Toronto, which is the middle of the country. It's near New York. And Jeff grew up in Vancouver above Seattle. Yeah. Yeah, so. I, I always just assume Americans don't know what maps look like. Sorry. <laughs> so, so we also got access to different American TV. Like I had. Right. Yeah. You guys got like. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So I had Fox from Seattle, and I I just remember like dis- part of like my anime memories are tied up in like. Uh, Part of my anime memories are tied up in in like uh, monster truck ads where it's like, see the monster trucks at Tacoma Dome. Um, whereas yours are probably no, we didn't we didn't really get anything from. Yeah. I every once in a while we there would be like a Buffalo channel, from yeah. Buffalo, New York, but like so I never got to see any of that stuff either. Mm. Um, my but, like next step was Four Kids. <laughs> yeah, but for yeah, Four Kids TV was was that I I watched it on a Seattle channel anyway. Um, DVDs, right. I would buy like, so I had to buy, or I, my parents would buy for me anime DVDs every time we'd go to Indigo, but like, I could only get one cause they were like 30 to $40 for four episodes. They were so episodes. much, God, it was terrible. It was worse than that. I think I remember the Dragon Ball Z ones were about $115 per box. Yeah. I, I, and I did, I, there were a lot of series I never finished cause I had to, I only got like half of it, like Samurai Champloo. I never finished that one. Beck, it took me forever to finish. I had to get a thin pack at an anime convention later. I that was, was when I started like actually finishing shows was when I could get those. I had to get lucky with what would show up with Blockbuster. Um, Oh God! Were you, did, you, did you ever get anything from Blockbuster? I, yeah, I remember getting a few anime from there, like mostly Spirited Away. We rented Spirited Away there. I had to my choose mom between. Actually, wanted to watch that. Yeah, my mom watched it too. Yeah, <laughs> my mom, but my mom is pretty open to anime stuff. Uh, in general, but it was so. the Oscars. That yeah. was like the thing. That's that why. That yeah, that's why my mom gave it a chance. Mm-hmm. But she's also open to watching other Ghibli stuff. So, um, um, but yeah, so I, the only series I ever completed, and I was motivated because by this point I did have a TV and, and a PS2 in my bedroom 
Um, so I could I had a little bit of privacy there. Uh, so I got Girls Bravo, and that had titties in it. Oh my god, <laughs> that was the whole Inuyasha was my first pur- like purposeful anime titty something. You know what I mean? Like not Inuyasha the day anime, the manga. Yeah, the manga. I remember when I bought the manga and Kagome's titties were in volume one. I was like, <gasps> titties. <laughs> Yeah, I I saw that in Ranma and Oh wait, no, but there was also Goku in Dragon Ball GT. That was the first I I I uh, Why that, did they put that on TV? No, Shippo was first. Shippo was first. Shippo you yeah, Shippo's Naked Shippo dick was was on the, TV here. Yeah. Around yeah, there. that yeah. was like I remember seeing that as a kid and being like <laughs> That was yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if they let that happen in America, but here I was like I was like Pikachu facing it, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Anyway, and, Bravo. <laughs> Inuyasha specifically gave me some like really weird ideas of anatomy because I got like an a, a Kagome figurine and like you could see up her skirt, but she had like diaper panties. So As was, they all 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 the all of those toys did. Yeah, so I was like, that's, that's... <laughs> this is normal. This is normal. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, so I I. Yeah, I collected all of Girls Bravo for sure. I got Paranoia Agent on DVD and a couple other things that I heard were good. At that point, um, I was reading like Anime Insider and um, uh, Beckett Collectors and stuff like that for ideas about what, she, what anime to watch because I couldn't go online. So I had to like indulge my habits in other ways, the same way I did my gaming stuff by picking up magazines. Um, and... Yeah, that that made me more keenly interested in stuff like Eureka Seven and FMA, and made me actually pay attention to them on Bionics. Um, I guess we should we should like move on from our childhoods into like. That well, I, I just quickly wanted to say about the magazines and stuff. Um, yeah. I had like the most. The reason I, I was more into manga at that point too. I got really into manga mm-hmm. um, because I. Hopefully, somebody else listening. I hope somebody else had this experience. Um, because it was like the greatest experience of my childhood is that we had a local tiny comic book shop, like tiny, not even sorry, card shop. It was a card shop. You've told me about this. this Yeah, it was called like Excalibur, but with an X. It was, um, right near some, like one of the main streets that my mom did like book club or whatever. And I don't know, but, um, they were just the best. They, the guy, it was just run by a guy, um, and he was so like dedicated to making sure I didn't give up on anime. Like th- he, when he saw that there was like a young girl who was interested in like anime for real and stuff, he like facilitated it like crazy for me in like the nicest way. Like he uh, ordered fruits basket volumes for me, um, and uh, he ordered uh, Shonen Jump for me. The monthly Shonen Jump ones, because we would only get them, you know, the monthly mm-hmm. English ones. So he, we couldn't get those in Canada. Um, so he got a, a, like a, a subscription for me to buy it off of him every month. That's how like, yeah. like he was just like really like, it was just like some someone's dad who was just like, I don't, you know, I don't want to see a girl pushed out of this space. And they had like Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments there that he'd let me take part in. With your, um, with your like terrible 80 yeah, card Yeah, deck. so me and one of my friends, um, my mom's like best friend had a son the same age as me. So we'd go together um, and he would always let the two of us um, in on it for free because he'd know we'd, you know, we would, it would be basically like a, a trial warm up round for somebody, right? Mm-hmm. Somebody who didn't have just a starter deck. But yeah, he was like the one of the big reasons I kept going with manga specifically. Um, and th- that I discovered a lot of series was because he was like that. That fruits basket hookup was like for real though. But it, it, life you, changer. It, for it you. was though because you, you would know too. That, like it wasn't really available quickly. Like, yeah, it, it was hard for chapters and stuff to get. Um, or Indigo to get stuff. No, Indigo Whereas, actually had a lot of manga. But not that, for us. Yeah. Not for us. Chapters didn't. Chapters didn't. So um, I think they must have merged in the future. Like yeah. they must have been separate companies or something. Anyway, so Excalibur guy, yeah, he he was just the best, and he really was like, like paying attention to the things that I liked and suggested things for me. And it is like very much thanks to him that I'm as into anime and manga or like stuck with it that i did so you bringing up that magazine because i had to choose between that magazine and shonen jump so mm-hmm. yeah that's what made me think of this but yeah i just wanted to tell my story about the the greatest manga experience of my childhood and this, this caliber guy 
This sort of clicked a thing into place for me, mm -hmm. which is that I also bought a lot of manga at Indigo. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have like somebody like actively encouraging me to buy good stuff the way that you did. Um, so I picked up like a few good things, like I picked up a few good manga, but mostly my manga purchases were motivated by the realization that my parents weren't checking them that hard and I could see a heck of a lot of titties. Hell yeah. Um, so That's like 12 year old I've ever yeah. heard, like honestly. I was like, I was like 14. Oh, same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Same thing. That's how I got into Mahoromatic and also how I ended up, Mahoromatic was one of the other ones that I collected in its entirety on DVD. Uh, it took me a while because I had to get that at an anime convention. But, like, I remember I picked up every volume I could of Mahoromatic uh, and Iki Tozen, or Battle Vixens, yep. as it was called in yep. in the United States uh, and, and Canada. Um, and, like, I remember that I zeroed in on that one because of how detailed the nips were. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny because I was into like I was still deep into like like Dragon Ball Z shit and stuff at this mm. point. Like I was still like people like you were into like card captors mm -hmm. and I was I was into like like Dragon Ball Z and Inuyasha were like my big childhood things. So it's like yeah, no, I was like the opposite. I was like at that age still into things being like you know the the like tomboy age. Yeah. You know, so I was like still into those. Yeah, in, so in I, I, nev was I never our, like, like crossover. Yeah, I never like moved into like the the like stuff that would I would think is girly but is actually etchy. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I I did love Dragon Ball Z and Naruto too when I was a yeah, kid. Yeah, like, and I also didn't like Naruto. <laughs> and and Shaman King on I on have four a kids. Confession: I I I think I didn't like Shaman King though because I couldn't follow it. Because mm, um, it was hard to. Keep I was. Up with. I. I would. I was dedicated to Tokyo. <clears throat> I was dedicated to Mew Mew Power and Mew Mew Power only. So okay. uh, Mew Mew Power was seven a.m. And after I got my seven a.m. show, I was not nearly as dedicated. Um, I think Shaman King might have been towards the end of the block too. Yeah, it was like, and yeah, that it meant was... it sometimes got cut off by sports. Yeah, D Digimon was on there. That's what drew me on to Fox Kids and and the Fox Box and and uh, Four Kids TV. Did did Americans have Fox Box? Yeah, Americans had Fox. Okay, Box. I, did, Fox. I didn't. I didn't know if it was. Oh yeah, I know. I didn't know if it was like called the same thing. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't know. That's all. Yeah, no, they, they yeah, they, that was like that transitionary period where they had like Kirby right back at you and stuff like that. Fighting Fudons. And I, I was super into Ultimate Muscle. I hated Ultimate Muscle. I fucking hated Ultimate Muscle. I'm sorry. It wasn't like for any good reason. I just, I, I thought it was going to be like Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. Right. And I was so disappointed when it wasn't. Yeah. I hated it. The, the, so I think a lot of my manga choices ended up being mo also motivated by what was left. So I ended up reading like like what was left after the people with good taste came through and bought up all the good manga. So I ended up um, getting Rave Master, which was, I mean, if worse fairy tale. Um, but yeah, I kind of got off track there. We were talking Sorry. about. I don't remember what we were talking about. I'm not, we, we I'm not good at that. We just bounced part. all over the place. Remembering there. what we were talking about is your job. It is my job. So it was Ikitozen, Titties. Um, yeah, and then and then uh, yeah, we we both watched like you watched shonen stuff, and then sort of got more into like flowery shojo romance stuff as you got older, right? I don't, I don't know. I watched everything when mm -hmm. I got older. Um, like not mech stuff. I was not into mech stuff when I got older. Um, for I went through a period of not liking it. Um, and then you became a Gundam obsessive. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically. But like, I, I, I watched everything. I really liked like drama e series, you know, like I really liked Death Note and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of like what else I watched at that age. I was watching everything. Right. So I was, I was going off of people's recommendations, yeah. which meant that I wasn't watching full series of anything. Right. Uh, I was, I was ADHD brain as a kid meant that I was just like five episodes of this show here, five episodes of that one there. Three episode test, three episode test. Not even, well, no, it was just as soon as I couldn't find more episodes easily, I moved on uh, basically is what happened. Um, I did want to interrupt right here and say, if you're watching it on YouTube, because I, like that that Excalibur story is like my favorite story in the entire world. So like I wish that I could like tell Excalibur guy that that it's closed now. It closed a long time ago, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Um, but because they were they were like above a theater and the theater closed. Um, 
but um yeah if if other people have like like stories about that person from their childhood who who passionately made sure that they didn't give up on anime or nerdy please, stuff in general yeah please i like those stories a lot they make me happy so please share please, them down in the please comments share, please share i like those stories a lot so if you have one of those i before we get too off topic i like those stories so please please tell me about that one person in your childhood who who rooted for you we got to set up a mailbag so people who are listening can send those in yeah yeah like an email or something yeah. we'll do that next week um, um yeah um, we'll figure that out um but uh off the top right i i did want to move into something based off of what you said yes um anime conventions i don't want to get yes. too far into that because you said you pick stuff up at anime conventions and you must have been going before me um yeah i got into going to anime conventions when i was like i think like 14 15 i just there were a few in vancouver um that i really wanted Actually, to you know go i to. was 14 15 so i would have been 13 of them i'm only a year younger than jeff so i would have been 13 so i went when i was 14 ish as well so mm-hmm. Um, yeah, go ahead. yeah, so I like I found out about these things called anime conventions through I think reading those magazines, um, and I was just like, well, I, I gotta go to these, um, and like, you know, the the cosplays, the panels, those were some of my like favorite summer memories, um, and then most importantly, the dealers hall opening up was my time to like actually pick up good anime on DVD. That's how I got my hands on Beck and Bacano. Um, and a bunch of other things that sort of became my favorites. Um, but at that point, I was also like test test watching stuff um, on just dubs.net and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I, made, I made friends through those. Uh, I feel like yeah. anime fans in Canada were like fewer and far between in general. Mm-hmm. So anime conventions were like extra important. Yeah, um, because it was I just I feel like compared to stories I hear from American friends of like growing up with, a, you know, a group of anime friends or something, you know what I mean is like, I feel like by the time we were towards the end of middle school, it was not normal for you to have more than one anime kid per school. Yeah, like, like you know, yeah, so like conventions were really important, I think, for us. I mean, at least in Toronto, that library anime uh, club that I was part of. It was like the library was in the middle of like a bunch of different elementary and high schools, right? Yeah, so like it was and, the only way. Like but, you couldn't have an anime club at school. There wasn't ever enough people ever. Yeah, we even, only even had in like high school. nine or ten people. Even, yeah. Well, even in high school, there was, I don't think I, there was anyone else who liked anime enough to be in an anime club. I, and I, I, I went to like a massive high school too. Anyway, sorry. Um, conventions, yeah, conventions, sorry. Well, I mean, all of my friends in high school, like all of my close friends ended up being my anime friends, yeah, basically, wow. or my gaming friends, but it wasn't I, that I was, many. I was still in my friend list period, so. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was still in my 12 year long, no, 12 years and longer than that. I was, what, what, how old are you when you graduate high school? 18? 18. 18. I was in my 18 year long friend list period. <laughs> so I didn't have anime friends ever. That's rough, buddy. <laughs> Shut up. So, so had to be very yes, careful reaching yes. over these. So yeah, two maybe anime, arms. maybe anime conventions were more important for me because I didn't know as many people. Um, but my first convention was Anime North. Um, it's, oh, yours, yours is you're like down. Yeah, I'm here. like hunching down. I'm like realizing my posture has been really these bad this are, whole podcast. We're yeah. These this is quite the 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 invented. setup we got. These are supposed to be for. Fo- I swear these are the ones I got for my phone. I'm yeah. S- no, I got these for this. They're whatever. They're... The, I have the exact same one for my phone with just a different attachment, and they're not good. And they didn't. They're like clip clip arms, and they didn't. Our table has too small of a lip. Yeah. So we're using this is a lawn chair that is that just... has arms. Yeah. So they're clipped onto the arms of the lawn chair right now. And you might be able to see we've got some uh, our camera bag and it's... pillows on here, so Junkrat doesn't climb up and ruin our, yes. our, so, our audio. But unfortunately, they're not the strongest. So Jeff has, if you're not watching on YouTube, Jeff has slowly been sinking. Uh, we yeah, didn't, we yeah. didn't notice. So um, um, I gotta, I gotta tighten don't mesh. do that. It will not. It doesn't work. You will. Yeah. You'll. You'll strip the screw or whatever. Okay. All right. I, I, I do it. But yeah, I've just Anyways. been like leaning down slowly. <laughs> so anyway, Anime North. Um, the thing I'm surprised you didn't know more about Anime North because YTV. The reason I knew about it was because YTV did coverage of Anime North. Everywhere. No, I, I remember that might have been like you might not have known it was Anime North or whatever. But yeah, so YTV was in Toronto. Um, and Anime North is our big convention. 
That's uh, that's what made me want to go to an anime convention. Yeah, the Zone was, did like a thing. They did coverage about of anime it, conventions where they would they would show every year. They would go to Anime North and they would show uh, and interview cosplayers and stuff. Oh, and they would yeah. show um, like the dealers hall and stuff. Yeah, they did like a Carlos and would usually walk around and talk to people and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, usually during Anime North, their uh, in between episodes was at Anime North instead of at the Zone. Yeah. Um, um, so Carlos, uh, you is like a host on ET Canada now. He, well, he was for a while. I don't think he is now. I think he's uh, doing music now. And Sugar became an actress. Oh and my god! <laughs> Wait, can we? Yeah, we do need to take a side story for this. Um, um, what movie was it? It was uh, Sarah so Marshall. It was the Sarah Marshall one. Wasn't no, it, it wasn't Sarah Marshall. It was so in someone and someone need wedding dates. No, I don't think so. No, it was. Yeah, no, it was the one where the guys need wedding dates because she gets. We'll look at we'll, we'll yeah it's it's it a out. movie some something and something need wedding dates obviously not very memorable but sugar is in it um there's a scene where she so gets wait, a massage so real fast real fast she's got the the most um, high pitched voice but yeah the most iconic voice yeah she has like a true anime girl voice mm -hmm. like naturally she, uh, she, she, was, she was she was chibi yeah she uh, was mini moon in, she was mini moon yeah mini um, moon yeah in, she voiced mini moon sugar was right. in um a um, Whatever Ten that movie was, something yeah. need wedding dates, um, and there's a scene where she gets a massage, um, and it's it just it makes it, it ruins the it ruins our like child. <laughs> she just has the most sexual moans, and like that that's the joke, right? Is that she's yeah. like real going at it with the moans, and it was just why did why did i have to hear that and like nothing wrong with it right yeah. it was just the association i have with that voice with my childhood was like because it's so iconic right like like so if you were big into sailor moon you can have that same childhood ru ruining experience for yourself <laughs> it's not the same but it's not the same because it's also sugar I her like, face yeah, yeah yeah like you're like watch it's like what? She's one of those like immortal celebrities, like, like but it was Keanu because... Reeves and Araki, who just has has yeah, it doesn't the age. Same does, actually, for... I mean, we don't know what she looks like now. Actually, yeah, yeah. But but in that movie, years. it was like she still had the same haircut. This anyway, yeah, it was like right away we're like sugar, sugar. Well, yeah. What? Um, I I is that her real name? It I is. think I think it was her real name. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Carlos, yeah, Carlos does music now. Um, but yeah, he used to, he was he was the real cool one. Um, I which is. I remember the storyline where they introduced him to the zone. He was just like this janitor who was hanging out. At, it, like he really did funny. stuff on the zone set after hours. And yeah. Anyway, yeah. Anime and we're North. getting way off topic. Anime North. Um, yeah, basically that's it. That's they showed Anime North every year and it was local. Uh, so when I was in ninth grade was my first time. Going. Um, when I was in ninth grade, um, I was under the impression that you had to go and cosplay too. I was like, uh -huh. they just gave off I had that, that like, I had that same like, idea from that, from YTV. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense that they would focus on like the, the cosplayers and stuff. But like in my head, I'm, I thought that you were weird if you went in normal clothes. So I got a shitty cosplay together. Yeah, I, I uh, so my first cosplay was. I mean, it was your first anime con. Yeah, so my first anime con, I didn't wear a cosplay at all. Mm -hmm. And then I, I felt like I was, I was underperforming there. You know, so I came back the next year um, and I, I did Phoenix Wright and I tried to spike my own hair like Phoenix Wright, which oh was God. a mistake. Um, yeah. And I, yep, I, I have nothing else to say. Yep. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. For what it's worth, I used my real hair, too. And I made my own little braids that I she has. She's got a uh, bob, which I already had. With like a little hair horns and little hair braids, so I like made the braids that eclipse and raise my real hair. So I can't really make fun of you for that one. But, <laughs> but I mean, Phoenix Wright is like the most you need a wig for this cosplay ever. Yeah. Um, yeah. and I also wore like a wrong color blue suit, um, mm -hmm. so that I got my parents to buy me. Uh, oh wait, no, I did one other cosplay when I was in seventh grade that doesn't count the halloween costume yeah, halloween your, halloween was, costumes when you're a kid don't count as cosplays but it was know? a new yasha i know but it, halloween costumes like you weren't aware of what it was you know mm -hmm. you were dressing up as you know yasha yeah. for halloween you know yeah it's different so i you know i dressed up as as pikachu for halloween one year you know anyway so so i guess we're kind of entering the the normal age now so yeah yeah kind of cut it off here probably because now we're entering like the i don't know 20 2008 2009 so that's yeah. not really old anymore when yeah when we're when we were sort of getting into yeah now now we're kind of modern so who cares yeah. um that's it that's our childhood with anime that i did want to talk about one other cosplay i don't care <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm, jo- I'm joking. Go ahead. Um, so one other cosplay I did was I, I was really into uh, video games at the same time. So I did Manny Calavera from Grim Fandango. I don't know what that is. Um, he's a Grim Reaper character. I, mean, I don't know what the game is either. That's, that's okay. Um, he, oh, excuse me. Yawn. So I was wearing a Grim Reaper robe and I made like this paper mask thing. Um, and like nobody recognized me except for one person who was like, you're from Soul Eater. And then I never cosplayed again. If we want to talk about traumatic times people call each other on character, my dumb ass cosplayed Chie Satunaka the same month the Scott Pilgrim movie came out. <laughs> my dumb ass at a comic book convention, not an anime convention. That's a- I, to, to Toronto, Toronto Fan Expo. Um, which is comic books. I wore a Chie Satanaka cosplay, and I'm sorry to anyone who's listening to audio, Trey, if you can put the two of them on screen right now, which would be Kim Pine in her green sweater, her green track jacket yep, that has yep, a light yep, green yep, stripe yep. I, this I way. I see it in my brain. And <laughs> next to her would be Chie in her green track jacket and lighter green stripe across here. Didn't she? Didn't they also both wear like Japanese high school schoolgirl skirts i think they might have both worn skirts yeah and they yeah. both and they both had the short brownish red bob like it was it, it was one you want to talk about traumatic times everybody calls you the wrong character <laughs> that's all i wanted to end it on that i'm so <laughs> sorry stupid fucking ass weren't that much yeah um so that was what it was like watching anime in canada yeah you we know? got a, a little off track a little, a little off track with that one a little all over the place but but i mean that's that's how childhood is right I guess. <laughs> or, I or that's know. how bad podcasts are. I wouldn't know. Are. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, that's how bad podcasts are. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, after that, like there was a couple years of more of the same in college and then yeah, now the we're here. streaming sites but, hit. I mean, even before that, though, was, it was um, like by then when you once youtube lifted the, the, the limit once youtube lifted the limit on 10 minute videos is, we're back to you know everybody had the same experience with yeah. anime it by was then, just yeah. kind of being online yep well thank you for tuning in <laughs> we haven't figured out a way to end these um that's it that's all thanks for hanging around um it's been nice we're still trying to get in, i guess the groove of this in the way that like not to be depressing, but our lives are stressful. And like, we want this to be a fun thing. Mm-hmm. So we don't want to do it when we're in like a high stress day. Yeah. So it's nice to get this one done finally. I mean, you know? Yeah. Um, we, we will be doing them weekly. Yes. I mean, we are. This is still weekly. Yes. Um, it's just nice to sit down for a second one. You yeah. Know? And yeah. thanks for coming out to join us. It's, hopefully, it's been nice hanging out with you guys. Hopefully next one won't have our arm thingies on a chair. We, we ordered. Actually, that might be here already. Oh well. That <laughs> we ordered Bye. like a table. <laughs> Bye.